Hello, I'm Rebecca of Pocketful of Posies. Today's video is another installment of historical casual wear. This time it's an 18th century bed gown. I think these gowns can also be called short gowns. They appear to be the same type of garment, at least as far as construction goes and how they work. They don't have any closures. They are worn just wrapped in the front a little bit and secured with an apron. So they were worn for working or also they could be worn for getting dressed, lounging about in your bedroom, I assume. So without further ado, let's get to it. Here we go. If you would like to draft your own short gown or bed gown, I found this gridded pattern at worldturnedupsidedown.blogspot.com and I will link that in the description. I made one of these previously using this pattern and it is a medium size with no changes made to the pattern. For mine, I used the Burnley and Trowbridge bed gown pattern. They have a sew along on their YouTube channel too, so it's great for a beginner or first 18th century project. My fabric is a printed cotton, not a historically accurate print. It's got little hearts, which are cute, but it's what I had on hand. Just getting started and I've already made a change. I was using the largest size on the pattern and my cotton fabric was not wide enough to cut it out on a vertical and horizontal fold. I folded my fabric horizontally and used the selvage edge for the center front and back. Mine is cut in two pieces instead of all in one because of this. This means that my gown will have a seam at the center back. That doesn't bother me. If it would bother you, choose a wider fabric than I did. I used pinking shears to cut it out. If you use a fabric that doesn't fray much, you can leave out finishing the raw edges and just leave them pinked. I added a quarter inch to the center front and back for seam allowance for that center back seam. My first assembly step was pinning and sewing the center back seam. I then cut the neck opening. Then I realized that I had sewn the left side center to the left side center instead of the left side center back to the right side center back. So yeah, if you use wider fabric, you will not make this mistake. I undid the incorrect seam and redid it the correct way. Okay, so I fixed my mistake and now there is a center back seam and the neckline, which, did I mess that up too? Possibly, but that should be easy enough to fix. And then the front is open. So now I'm going to attach the cuffs. Even though I used modern methods for the majority of this project, I did choose to flat fell the cuff seams. Trim one side and fold the other over the trimmed seam allowance and whip stitch covering the raw edges.
The next step is sewing the side seams from the bottom edge up through the bottom of the sleeve cuff. Okay, I've got my side seams pinned and I'm going to go ahead and sew those up on the machine. You could of course do this entire thing by hand, but uh, I'm not gonna, no way. So um, I also am not going to flat fell the seams because I pinked them and that is good enough for me. If you don't care about historical accuracy then what's the point point? and what even is historical accuracy seriously so you could pink your raw edges if you've got a fabric that doesn't fray too badly or you could flat fell them and do it by hand or you could flat fell on the machine if you wanted to do that you could also zigzag your raw edges and since I'm going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance instead of a half inch, inch seam allowance to give myself a little bit more room, I'm really not worried about it. I'm just going to leave them pinked. If they start to fray after a few washes, maybe I'll zigzag, but probably not. So off we go. Then I folded and pinned the hem at center front and the bottom edge. Time for the collar. This is the fiddliest bit and it is best done by hand so you have the most control. I cut my collar piece a bit bigger just to make sure it would fit. Any excess can be trimmed or folded under later. I marked the center back. Next I ironed the seam allowance under on the collar. The center back of the collar is lined up and pinned on top of the center back of the gown neckline wrong side of collar to the right side of the gown. It's pinned to the neckline matching marks and stopping at the fold mark on the collar. The collar is whip stitched to the neckline, making sure to cover the raw edges of the neckline. Next, the other half of the collar is folded and pinned to the inside, covering all the raw edges. The top of the center front opening is folded to the inside and raw edges are turned under. Finally, the center front neck and collar are whip stitched down on the inside. Her 
Hercules was helpful, as always. I really enjoyed this project. I'm happy to have an informal, casual 18th century garment. I paired it with my blue linen petticoat, Augusta stays, and linen shift and linen under petticoat. It's held closed with an apron. You could add a pin for more security if you wanted. This short gown or bed gown is a fantastic project if you're wanting to get started with 18th century historical costuming. You could wear it without stays underneath if you haven't gotten to making any yet. Be sure to check out Burnley and Trowbridge's other 18th century sew along videos for more beginner projects. Do you have 18th century projects in the works? What are you working on now? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload, you can hit that little bell icon. Sometimes it works. If you'd like to support the channel further, I have a coffee account and that is linked down below. Again, thank you so much and I will see you on our next sewing adventure. Bye! Came out of my shoe. <laughs>